Turns out you can run over one block gaps in Minecraft, or even walk over them. You can do it backwards. It's really easy if you know math. You just have to align yourself properly. And doing this is super satisfying, but as for practical usage, you can use this trick to avoid trampling crops. Also, head heater jumps have never been this easy, and you can even do them with a metal trapdoor above you. So today I will explain how to do it, because this was not a trick, there's no barriers, I'm not cheating, I'm not a wizard, just a mathematician. Same thing. So here's the theory. Minecraft only works on each tick. There's 20 ticks in a second, in equal intervals, and everything in between those ticks is just a smooth transition. Calculations for any entity's position are done during those ticks and they always follow the same formulas. If your collision box is on top of a block, even by one pixel, you're not gonna fall. If you walk off a block, you're not gonna instantly fall, but rather on the next tick, because Minecraft follows the cartoon logic. What's interesting is that if you mine a block underneath you, you will instantly fall, unlike in the previous example. So what I think is happening is Minecraft checks your current position and your position from a tick ago, and if any of those are on top of a block, you don't fall. However, if both of them are airborne, you fall. So when crossing one block gaps, you can only stay mid-air for one tick. Why did Mojang decide on that? Probably to prevent the player from phasing through blocks. Except you can still phase through blocks. You see, your vertical position is calculated first, and only after that, your horizontal position is calculated. Unrelated side note, but if you take this to the extreme, you can start breaking the game. I just launched myself at above the speed of sound. It appears as if I was facing through blocks, but it's actually an illusion. Like I said earlier, everything that you see in between ticks is just a smooth transition, and I stretched those ticks so far from each other that even replay mode doesn't follow my position. But I'm getting sidetracked. You will only fall if you are in air for two ticks or longer. So to cross the gap, you need to optimize your position and ideally be on the very edge of the previous block before stepping off of it and also give yourself some time to build up the momentum because you don't start at full speed in Minecraft. This is your movement speed formula. It's recursive because your speed depends on your speed in the previous tick and its unit is blocks per tick, which you can translate to blocks per second by multiplying them by 20, but we're not gonna do that because blocks per ticks are a lot easier to work with. Minecraft players have 0.6 blocks of width, so the real gap size in which you can actually fall is only 0.4 blocks. The coordinates that you see are the exact position of the middle point in your feet. So when standing at the very edge of the block, you should see 0.300 at the end of your coordinate, but it's really difficult to align yourself in that exact position, even when crouching. So now it's time for calculations. I'm gonna be using a Python script. First, I calculate my movement speed after t ticks of moving, then we'll do the same for some other movement methods. Then it's good to know after how many ticks will your momentum be high enough to cross this one block gap. So the combined distance that you will cross in two consecutive ticks has to be higher than 0.4 blocks. Now the most important part, calculating the distance traveled after a certain amount of ticks. Distance equals speed multiplied by time, but the speed is actually the average speed. And the average speed is the sum of all speeds divided by their amount. But their amount is actually equal to the time, so it cancels out. And you're left with just the sum of all speeds. And that's the distance. So it's just a simple for loop, which adds all of your speeds together, which depends off of your movement method. And now we can find the coordinates of your starting position. There's actually a lot of different coordinates that can work, and I found all of them. Let's start with walking. We know that the minimum amount of ticks for walking is 3, because in tick 4 your speed is 0.196, and in tick 5 it's 0.205, these are all in blocks per tick, so the distance traveled in just those two ticks is their sum, 0.402, which is enough to cross the 0.4 block gap, because to cross it your distance needs to be slightly longer than 0.4, so I assumed 0.401, so I got exactly 0.001 block more than I needed. So the result should actually be a range of working coordinates, and the 0 0.001 is their difference. Now to optimize the usage of our distance, the last tick will need to be at the very edge of the block, so the place where your coordinates show 0 0.3, so you subtract that 0 0.3 from the distance traveled. And that's our starting position. You can also get the full range by adding to it the difference that we previously calculated. So for walking, on tick 3, 
you need to align yourself between 0.868 to 0.869. So I tested both of these values in practice and they work. And in fact, if you go 0.001 block out of this range, you will fall. So we found all of the values for tick 3. You can also do this for any tick after 3. So here I can display all coordinate ranges up until tick 20. I also added the ability to negate those, which is just 1 minus the result. And this will help you for going west or north. So just the directions that your coordinates decrease. And the base, which just gets added to all of the results. I didn't test all of the results, because there's infinity of them. So let's now do the same thing for sprinting, or sprinting at 45 degree angle. I tested some of them with a 100% success rate. Okay, so it works, but it's impractical. Having to align yourself for every single gap? Eh, let's just find a way to run over consecutive one block gaps. If your movement speed was exactly 0.25, then after 4 ticks, your relative position would always be the same. But 0.25 is faster than your maximum walking speed and slower than your maximum sprinting speed, so I need to slow down. So far I have only been moving at exactly 90 degree angles, but when calculating your speed in the z-axis, your acceleration also gets multiplied by the cosine of your rotation. So let theta be an angle at which your speed in the z-axis is 0.25 when sprinting forward. And after simplifying we get that the cosine of theta is equal 0.89, so theta equals arc cosine of that number, which is slightly more than 27 degrees. And for the x-axis it's 90 degrees minus plus theta. So I also find the starting coordinates, position myself and I'm not falling, not yet. But there's one issue, I didn't position myself exactly at 27.0140942663740666 degree angle. I approximated it to 27.01, which will allow me to run for quite a while, probably a few hundred blocks, but not endlessly. Also, running at an angle is completely impractical, I mean, where will you find terrain like this? So let's find a method to run straight for a lot of blocks at least. Doesn't have to be endless, because it's impossible. So at this point I just run 5000 simulations, each one starting further by 0.001 blocks. And the furthest I got, all of these simulations were sprinting at 45 degree angles, 82 blocks traveled. It's actually in 4 different simulations. And also a lot of them fell at the 80th block. But none of them fell at the 81st block. And that's because, on the 81st block, there's a solid block and you don't fall through those. Anyway, if you're gonna remember something from this video, it should probably be one of those four coordinates. For example, 0.105. From this position, if you sprint at 45 degree angles, you will fall after exactly 82 blocks. But keep in mind that that position is only for when your coordinates are decreasing. If your coordinates are increasing, it's 1 minus 0.105, which is 0.895. And you have to hold sprint and press W and D at exactly the same time. One last thing I got for you is the probability of crossing a one block gap if you position yourself randomly. So it's just the amount of positions that you can take divided by the speed. And you can see those probabilities right here. I even got it for speed 2. For speed 2 it's 98%. So if you fall with speed 2 through a one block gap, that's very unlucky. With speed 3 it's 100%. Also, when you're moving through chains, the gap in between two chains is actually 0.212. So even less than your walking speed, meaning there's a 100% chance you will cross this gap, if you have the momentum, of course. So yeah, I'm not exactly sure what you will use this for, obviously make head hitter jumps very easy, can't even call them jumps anymore. Maybe can be used for some world record parkour skips, or maybe for optimizing your jump distance. Oh, and now you also know why going through these kind of corners doesn't make you fall. And as always, these do not work in bedrock. I mean, you can walk through one block gaps, but the coordinates do not work. Don't try them. I think the movement formula is different in Bedrock. Yeah, subscribe so I can afford more wishes on Bernie's. Bye.